And at 153, it starts to broach the sun. And then hold it right there. And 309 is at, it's at its maximum. I've been selected by NASA as a solar eclipse ambassador um, about a year ago. And at this point, um, I've gone through some specialized training and, you know, um, exposure to some things about the solar eclipse that, you know, we're going to be able to, you know, impart on the local community and give them an opportunity to learn more about the solar eclipse and, and to be safe about it too, how to be safe and, and how to maximize their opportunity in viewing, viewing the solar eclipse. Stars. So we may see those stars that we wouldn't otherwise see until six months from now. Well, it's really um, gratifying to be able to, you know, impart knowledge on other people that might not know about things and then actually may, may ignite uh, something in them that serves to want, to want to learn more about it. And that's, you know, that's the essence of my reason for being a teacher is, you know, years later I get to see students that, you know, learned from me and then came back and said, uh, you were the reason for why I wanted to go and study something. There's a lot more research that's going to be able to happen in that area because there's a lot more sensors. So scientists are really looking forward to this. Because so it makes me very happy as well as interested that we are teaching the Elkhart community and the youth on the harm and interesting um, intellectual properties about the solar eclipse. So being in the 97% totality range, the harmful solar rays can cause more damage than looking at the normal sun. Although if you were in 100% totality, you can look at the solar eclipse without solar glasses. And we are at the next phase right now, which is weighing units. You know, being able to kind of illustrate what's going on from a realistic perspective and personalize it. That's what I really like about teaching is, you know, bringing it down to the human level to, to understand about that. I mean, orbital mechanics can be really involved with the math, but when you can bring it down to basic terms, um, this is really about, you know, one body moving in front of the other body for a period of time and, you know, it's gonna obscure, but it's gonna affect quite a number of people we have some tables set up for some activities, both for the adults and for primarily for the kids, you know, to, to be able to do some hands-on uh, tactile type things. So our student government group, as well as SSAC, have helped cut out uh, the lion mask for the Elkhart lions for kids to put around their solar glasses because the solar glasses are built for the average adult and it helps kids wear the solar glasses as well as looking pretty good. There's also chalk art to detail the solar rays which happens during the solar eclipse in the 97% totality range that we will have, as well as a pinhole projector, which works by having a hole behind you, as well as a black sheet in front of you, about one meter, and it'll show you a shadow of the solar eclipse, actually. I'm privileged to have been chosen by NASA. Um, I'm privileged to have had the opportunity to work with you know, so many great people that you know, want to encourage others to learn about this. And, uh, and I'm really fortunate to have been supported by the Elkhart Community School Corporation in this regard to be able to put this information out uh, to our students, families, and the community. So I think it's a very um, grateful opportunity and I'm happy that he took, it, he took that role and that he wants to take his pride and joy, such as the sun itself, in teaching our community. It's wonderful.